Well, there is a lot happening this morning. Obviously, the release of WNBA star Brittany Griner within the last couple of hours. She is now headed back to the United States. But also, we are hearing from Vladimir Putin this morning, the Russian president, saying it could be a lengthy process. His words talking about the war in Ukraine. He was asked about the length of his country's war with Ukraine. This war has been going on for nine months. Recently, neither country has seen any major wins. And according to the BBC, 100,000 soldiers have been killed on both sides to date. But with winter approaching, Ukraine is thinking that it will be able to use the cold weather to its advantage. You've got all of this, and then you have the situation with Brittany Griner that is ongoing, and American Paul Whelan, who is still in Russian custody. Much of this is connected. Nick Smith is joining us with more on reaction to Putin's words this morning, not just talking about the length of war, but his nuclear capabilities as well, Nick. Marnie, absolutely. You just spoke with uh... Rykov. And Paul Rykov just told you about how it is the will of the Russian people to try to wear down the resolve of the Ukrainians. During an appearance on local television earlier this week, a spokesman for the Ukrainian army's eastern forces said that cold weather and frozen ground will help troops speed up counteroffensive efforts in northern Kharkiv. After weeks with neither side making major advances in the war in Ukraine, a glimmer of hope for Ukrainian troops fighting to take back a pair of small cities in Russian-controlled Luhansk. Ukrainians have been dealing with limited access to heat and electricity because of Russian assaults on civilian infrastructure. And many are worried that a winter freeze could put Ukrainians in an even more precarious position as temperatures continue to drop. Over the past nine months, the Ukrainian military has defeated the Russian army in the battles of Kyiv, Kharkiv and Kherson. Ukrainian forces continue to drive the Russians back toward their own borders, and U.S. intelligence officials say Russian morale is dropping as soldiers, including many of the several hundreds of thousands recently mobilized, refuse to fight, uh, potential draftees flee the country, and others simply surrender. On Wednesday, speaking at the Kremlin, President Putin acknowledged that the conflict is going to, quote, take a while, as he also warned of the increasing threat of nuclear war. Mr. Putin went on to say there is no need for additional mobilization of Russian troops and described Moscow's territorial gains as, quote, a significant result for Russia. His comments come as an invasion that started in the spring is now fully planted in winter. But one Ukrainian army spokesman believes, if anything, the winter weather could be a benefit to Ukrainian military. The spokesman for the army's eastern forces told local broadcasters earlier this week, quote, the cold weather and frozen ground will allow armed forces of Ukraine to increase the pace of their counteroffensive in the east of the country. But retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel da David Daniels, uh, now a senior fellow with the think tank Defense Priorities, says the cold weather could be just as much of a boon for Russian forces as it is for Ukrainians. He says it's a mixed blessing because it will make it easy for Ukraine to move, but it's also going to make it easier for Russian to launch counter strikes. Meanwhile, Russian President Putin again warning the West about Russia's nuclear capabilities, signaling his willingness to, in his words, defend Russia by any means. Now, Kyiv's mayor, meantime, warning of an apocalypse scenario for Ukraine if this winter Russia strikes on infrastructure continuing, and he says the apocalypse might happen, like in Hollywood films, when it's not possible to live in homes considering the low temperature. That was the mayor of Kiev. Now, Marnie, President Biden, uh, NATO, and the group of seven nations have said that they will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. Supporters of Ukraine and its civilian population believe this should include as much as it takes to allow Ukrainians to live through the winter. Marnie? Well, Nick, the U.S. Western allies supplying Ukraine continue to, with a lot of financial assistance, missile defense, anti-drone aircraft, anti-aircraft systems. What more can be done to support Ukraine right now without pulling the West further into this conflict, possibly into a war with Russia? Uh, Marnie, look, Ukrainians and U.S. intelligence officials say what Russia is trying to do is clear. Freeze a civilian population to death until they surrender. They say that uh, it is, it's the very definition of a terrorist act, a uh, genocidal regime. They say in addition to providing Ukraine with money and weapons, the U.S. should organize and lead a major public and private international humanitarian effort to help Ukrainians make it through the winter. Uh, generators, blankets, fuel, community 
communication networks, and it should be supplied by rail, road, and air. And Marnie, they are quick to remind us uh, that officials that the, the U.S. has done this before. You'll remember back in 1948, the Soviets blocked roads into the West Berlin, um, cutting off food and electricity. Well, the U.S. and Britain mounted a massive humanitarian airlift that literally lasted for 18 months or more. And when the Soviets finally realized that the U.S. and Britain were determined to save West Berliners, they backed down and lifted that blockade. They believe that same action could work with Ukraine. 18 months then, we're nine months into the war now. All right, Nick, thank you for that update. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.